you know, the vast majority of the teenagers we talk to have thoughts of suicide or have thoughts of self-harm. Colorado Crisis Services, this is Daniel. Who am I speaking with? I've talked to teens in schools where there's a suicide of another classmate and they're really worried about that. So it does sound like there was some suicidal thoughts. The Talk to teens in schools. Uh, there was a shooting in the neighborhood and the school went on lockdown and the kid was terrified um, and was really triggered by that experience. Are you having any thoughts of suicide? Anything you can think of in the realm of mental health and social work and working with people, you will hear on the crisis line. Anything been coming up that's brought these thoughts up for you? You know, we hear from a lot of teens about relationship issues. Romantic partners, families, it's called perceived sense of burden. So it's when you feel like you were a burden on the other people in your life and that the solution to that is to end your life so you're no longer that burden. You know, we'll ask, do you have any friends that you talk to? And they'll say, I have talked to them so many times, I know they're tired of me and I don't want to keep putting this on them. So if someone is having thoughts of suicide, we're going to ask a lot of questions um, to get an accurate picture for us about what's going on. So it sounds like, you know, suicide has been a part of your family history. We create a safety plan with them, so just a plan of things they can do, people they can talk to. Yeah, so our walk-in clinics are a lot like urgent care clinics. We take 20,000 calls a month. We take about um, 12,000 texts. So that's a lot of people that you interact with in a day, and that's a lot of, it's a lot of crisis really easy to get caught up in what kind of difference am I making? The thoughts of suicide that you're experiencing, um, do you feel like you're going to act on these thoughts of suicide today? It's hard to keep that boundary so that things don't carry over into you. You know, when someone is talking way up here, like their crisis is way up here, you have to meet them here. And sometimes that's really hard too because they're really, really panicked and you have to stay very even and level. And hearing someone that panicked for a period of time can definitely trigger things in you. You can feel yourself wanting to come up to that level. Um, and it takes time to really train yourself to stay calm and to know that your tone is probably one of your biggest and greatest tools on a crisis line. Because if I talk to you like I am right now and you're in this panicked, like frantic state, you're gonna start to match my tone eventually. Just like I have that desire to match yours, you'll have that desire to match mine. Um, so there are a lot of skills and very nuanced skills that come with this work. Yeah, and for yourself, how have you been doing? Are you feeling okay and like you can do this? Typically we don't get calls where at the end they're like, thank you so much, you were amazing, you, were the, you saved my life. We don't typically get that because we're talking with people in their worst moment. We're not talking with people after that moment has passed and they're in a better space. And you know, if your suicidal thoughts get stronger or they haven't gone away, how about giving us a call back so we can talk some more? You know, success is you connected with someone level with them on an emotional level, have like that warm, soothing tone to talk them through what's going on. And did you just allow them some space to vent? Because even if you've done that, that's success and that's helpful for someone. Of course, you take care.